Sweat, baby, sweat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. It's Again, you're not screaming, you're not screaming. No more of that screaming. Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone. Episode 139. Wow. 139 episodes, people. I say that every single episode, and it's... Ha. <sighs> it's nothing impressive. Nothing impressive. We're still figuring things out. And so what I'm working on right now is um you know the podcast the podcast is a place for me to sit and just have a conversation and talk the podcast is a place to not worry about too much editing a place to worry about or to not worry about a lot you sit down you vent you just talk about what's going on in society and I've come to that conclusion I mean I already came to that conclusion when I started the podcast but you see the problem is you start these projects they escalate you continue they get better and then it gets to a point where you think okay I gotta I gotta evolve I gotta do something better but you really don't have to you can just sit down and do what your original t intention was and if it was going good, why change it, you know? The whole idea of podcasts are to just sit down, talk, listen to people talk, right? So that's what I'm doing. And so the last few episodes I talked about wanting to implement new things into here, but I'm not going to. This podcast is a place for me to just sit down and do what I've been doing, and that is talking to a camera and showing some videos every once in a while, you know, playing some stupid sound bites. I don't want to do butchering no more. God, I got both of them going, right? I've been sick for the past three days. The Logan, Logan Paul. It's been. Um. um. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I've concluded. The podcast is my space. The podcast is something you can consistently do without worry of you know, not getting it done in time. So what I was going to do was start uh, like a, uh, a video essay style with lots of editing, lots of production involved, um, writing script, scripted videos, and I enjoy doing that. It just takes time. So to implement that into every episode of the podcast just would not be feasible. So I've come to the conclusion that the podcast is going to be what it's always been and it you know it'll improve over time just through the simple act of doing it. Okay? And so there's the there's going from here on out there's going to be the podcast and I hate saying this shit because my my ideas change on a daily basis but I think I've figured it out here like the, there's going to be the podcast and then there's going to be like uh, uh, video commentary essay style stuff as well on this channel but that'll be separate and that won't be as consistent as these it'll be like maybe one or two a month and I'm working on one right now and I have been working on it for the past week just trying to figure out the details of the video get all the the clips that I want I'm doing research on a specific person that I want to talk about you know, I gotta write out the script. I gotta first watch all their videos, figure out them before I decide to. I should explain. So these video essays that I want to do. Super comedy orientated, but they're also just things that I enjoy. It's gonna be a video dedicated to specific things that I enjoy, and generally it's going to be about specific people that I enjoy. Usually YouTubers. Probably gonna be mostly YouTubers. I'm not going to say who the first one is. I'll, it'll get revealed when the video goes out. But I've been working. It's going to be... This is... Yeah. 
It's good. It's good. It's going good. It's going great. Like better than I expected. There's been a few bumpy paths, blah, 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 bumpy spots in the road where I'm like, "Fuck, do I really want to do this?" And I thought about just not doing it, but I was like, "No, you got to stick to this and do it." Pretty well everything I've done in my life, I quit early. I would quit early, and then I would regret it. And so now I'm, you know, as I'm getting older, I'm learning that I gotta stick to shit. That's my biggest problem in life is sticking to it. And so I'm just, I know I made the decision. And when I came up with the idea, it was a great idea in my head. And I was super inspired in that moment. So I'm taking that moment and I'm keeping it in my brain to let myself know that you can't give up on this. You had a vision and that vision is going to happen. And Janice, why the fuck is my mug empty? I'm not fucking playing around, Janice. Why the fuck is my mug empty? You cock sucking fucking piece of goddamn. Janice didn't fill my cup. Janice is gonna get her neck broken. Janice, I thought we were on good terms, my woman, my man, my man, my woman. I was gonna say my man, but she's a woman, so. One of these days, Janice, I swear, if this cup wasn't, if this cup wasn't, uh, if this cup didn't mean as much to me as it does, I would literally take it and I would throw it at your face so that it smashes into a million pieces and you would be lying on the floor crying like a little bee. This is violent. <laughs> Why am I so violent? It's not real, okay? I don't actually feel this way, people. It's not real. It's just a stupid act I put on for a stupid... <sighs> stupidness. I've literally been sitting in this house for I don't know how many days since Christmas. It's There's not a lot going on, okay? It's the middle of winter. It's cold as fuck outside. There's snow everywhere. You know, in order to get somewhere, you got to wait for your vehicle to warm up. You got to bundle up in a bunch of warm clothing. It's just a pain in the ass. So I'm just waiting for the fucking spring and then the summer. The spring is the good time. Because you see, the spring comes around. It's, you know, it's no longer cold, but it's not too hot either. All the snow's gone. I mean, shit's wet and slushy for a little bit. There's a there's a moment right right when like spring is about to end and right when summer is about to start. That's like the perfect little. That's just like the perfect little spot because there's no bugs, not a single bug. It's a beautiful temperature outside. You know, do whatever you want. And then the summer comes in, and that summer's great too. But then there's bugs, and then it's way too hot. <laughs> You know, and then fall, same thing as like the end of spring. When fall starts, you got the nice color changing of the leaves. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, no bugs. So there's, a, there's just like two little sections in Canada. We're like, ah, we're in a good spot right now. And then it just goes shit. Because the majority of the year is cold from like anywhere from about no mid to late November till about and sometimes even October till about March so we're in January right now so we're in the thick of it almost February is usually pretty thicker I don't who gives a f I'm not talking about this I can't stand where I'm at but I feel like you know the grass isn't always greener it's not so I don't know. Life is life is life is life. And my life is not the life that I was expecting to be living at this point. But anyway, that doesn't matter. Whatever. You just do what you're what you know. This is this is the hand I was dealt. I gotta fucking play these cards or else I'm just gonna be miserable forever. Because I'm miserable as it is every day. I'm a miserable piece of miserable shit.
and uh, I've I've been so miserable my whole life. I've gotten comfortable with it, and so as soon as the misery starts to fade away, I get frightened. And I'm like, what is going on? I should be miserable. Why am I happy? <laughs> and then I stop the happiness. That's me. I'm sure you can relate. I'm sure there's people out there who can relate to this. Anyway, uh, for the audio listeners, you are not going to be able to watch any of this stuff. I have a, I just have a few little videos. Nothing too crazy, but I opened with this guy. He's running down a sidewalk, okay? And at first glance, you're just like, okay, this guy's running with his dog on a leash. But uh, no, he's got both his arms completely horizontal outwards, okay, both of them, and they're both holding a leash. But he's running, he's running like this. You can't see audio listeners, but he's got his hands completely horizontal and he's running. Just imagine that, okay, and he's holding a leash in each hand, and at the end of each leash are two uh, parrots, macaws, or whatever, <laughs> And they're fucking fly. They're flying. They're flying in front of him on leashes while he's running. <laughs> it's the weirdest fucking shit I've ever seen. It's so weird. It's got to be fake. There's no way this is fucking real. Okay? Because for one, if you were going to walk your parrots or fly them, why wouldn't you just get a bigger leash so they can have, well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe that would be a bad idea because it would get tangled up. Okay, so maybe I can understand the short leash. But to do this, is this, this can't be real. And if this is real, what the fuck, dude? There's got to be an easier way to fucking take your parrots for a fly. But look at this. Look at this crazy shit. How can this be real? How in the fuck can this be real? Because, you know, it looks real for a bit. But here's the, here's the thing about the internet. There's so many people that are getting so good at editing things that you could watch something that's like, oh, I think that's real. But there's no fucking way it's real. Not even a little bit. It's just edited to look very, very realistic because... The way that they have the camera shaking, you know, makes it seem like it was just caught in the moment. That's part of making it look real. And so everyone in the fucking comment sections of these videos are under the impression that these are real. Like everyone. It's crazy to, to see just how many people actually believe this shit. And I'm not saying this is fake, but there, there are plenty of videos out there that are totally fake but people 100% believe them and I feel like this shit's fake there's no fucking way anybody would do this not only that would this even work I can't even picture this working you know anyway doesn't matter um Parrots are cool, dude. Oh. It's been Okay. So, uh quick uh, let's just a uh, stupid transition here. Um cuz I didn't prepare enough for this. I bought a uh, Nintendo Switch recently and I bought Breath of the Wild cuz I've been constantly hearing people talk about it. And by people, I mean YouTubers. And by YouTubers, I mean uh, Nicky Jakey and um, Eddie Burback. Because I've been watching a lot of those guys lately. And they are constantly, you know, like uh, uh, jizzing all over Breath of the Wild. And I've always been a huge fan of the Zelda franchise, especially Ocarina of Time. I can't tell you how many fucking amazing memories I've had with that video game. Like, Ocarina of Time is... Like, I can't even put into words. And I'm not just saying this to say this. What is that? 
Oh. I'm not just saying this to say this. I I literally mean Ocarina of Time is so embedded into my memory that it's just like I can't believe it. Like it's the best. It's it's the best. The memories I have <laughs> from Ocarina of Time. I know I keep repeating myself, but just like I could think right now, just sitting in a specific place, my friend's house upstairs. And you know, we we didn't have we had internet, but you know, nobody posted online about how to beat the game or or there were no tutorials there was no no there was none of that shit so we just we would have to sit for hours and hours and figure the shit out with my friend and his sister and then his sister's friend and then you know like there was just all kinds of people and i don't and the thing is like i feel like if i talked to them about it now i'm not even sure if they would feel the same way about it that I feel about. They might. But like they're different people than me. No, I'm sure they'd feel the same way. Because those were great memories. Those were like there were so many times where we would play Ocarina of Time. <laughs> oh man. And like I long for nostalgia. I'm I'm the kind of person that uh thinks about the past constantly and still wishes I was in the past. Because I miss it so goddamn much. Because I haven't... I don't think I've had as fun of a time as an adult as I had when I was a child playing Ocarina of Time. And that sounds ridiculous. (laughs) (laughs) But I can't explain that shit, dude. Because you're a child and it's your first integration into the video game world and creating friendships and it's just it's just these great great moments that are hard to you know live up to because it's a such a monumental time in your life but anyway i brought i bought breath of the wild and fuck me is that game ever good dude i really wish that they would they would have implemented more of the classic songs from specifically ocarina of time because they you can kind of hear it. You know, they integrated those songs into the, into Breath of the Wild. Like you can, it's the same melody, but it's like just there for a few seconds, and it's a different instrument, and it's it's not the same. You know, and I know it's a different game, and I know that they want to make different music and whatnot, but I I just wish they had some of those aspects in this game. Now, don't get me wrong; I still am like just starting the game. So I haven't uh, explored, you know, the map is fucking huge. There's so much shit to explore. There's so much shit to discover. There's like an unbelievable amount of things to discover in that game. I don't know that, but that game is so well made. Like literally every aspect of the game is what you want in a video game. Like if you want to go somewhere... You don't have a horse or whatever. You can literally, you can climb up anything. Everything is climbable in the game except for a few specific things. But you can climb anything. Like normally in a game, you want to get to this point on the map, but you're down here. So normally in a video game, you'd have to follow the road all the way up and around and back. You know, you got to take the specific path because there's mountains and shit in between, right? But in here, in Breath of the Wild, if there's a mountain in your way, and you have enough stamina, and you do it properly and coordinately, you can just climb up the mountain and go up the other side. Like you can climb every... It's it's so cool, dude. And I wish I could explain this better, but like every aspect of fighting, when you're fighting stuff, there's... You know, you can freeze the time. You can freeze the water to walk on it. You can... You can drop... You have, a, you have an infinite amount of bombs, too blow up holes in the wall to get into specific places there's not one way to fight a uh, an enemy there's like a hundred different ways you can approach this enemy and you have to get creative in order to defeat these enemies if you just do it the basic bare bones way with the sword and shield 
you're not gonna get you're not gonna get through the game at all. You have to utilize all these things. There's also a magnet. If there's pieces of metal around, you can grab it with the magnet, pick it up, use it to make a bridge, use it to smack enemies, use it to push buttons. There's so many fucking aspects of this game that's so good. And, like, the map is huge. Every single character has, like, a different little story they tell you. And some of them give you advice. Some of them even give you items. Some of them uh, tell you secret locations. Like, talking... Sometimes in video games you'll find you'll talk to a person... And they just spit nonsense that has nothing to do with the game. But in Breath of the Wild, every character can offer you something. And if they're sleeping, you can't you can't talk to them, so you gotta wait till they're awake and you can talk to them. But you don't even know what they're gonna offer until you talk to them. And you don't even have to talk to them to progress to the game. And so the great thing about Breath of the Wild, and even Nintendo in general, is that they don't they don't hand everything over to you, okay? They're not they're not holding your hand walking through the whole process of the game. They um they just give you the game and you figure the rest of the shit out. I mean, they tell you how to play, but uh you got to use their instructions to make your own uh make your own fucking progress to the game everyone has will have their own unique way of how they how they you know play through each mission there's no specific way to do it you do whatever the fuck you want and it's so good it's so good bro so if you don't have an, a nintendo switch get one and get breath of the wild um i'm glad i went with nintendo because Nintendo is good in a lot of ways. And it's been a very long time since I've had one. The last Nintendo I had was actually an N64. Because after that, I was like, I saw Xbox. And I was like, what? This thing's way better. So I got the Xbox, and then the Xbox 360, and the PS4. And then now I'm back to... Now I'm back to Nintendo. Okay? Why don't we... uh? Watch something else here. This is something kind of crazy I saw. Let me just answer this text here. I got a text. I just... Oh, no, I know. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay. Um, so... God damn it, I'm all tangled up here. So, uh, scrolling through Twitter. and Someone retweeted this or some shit. Posted it. Uh, but there's this, where is it? Where's this place? There's this place in, I don't know how to pronounce this. How do you pronounce this? Maeklong Railway Market. Hold on, let's see where this place is. M-A-E-K-L-O-N-G. Uh, okay, well. Oh, it's a railway. So the 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 <coughs> the Maeklong Railway is a a come on, zoom in. Is a thousand millimeter what? Millimeter, a thousand millimeter railway that runs for nearly sixty seven kilometers between Wang Wain Yai Bangkok and Samut Songkram <laughs> in central Thailand. I, I don't know. I can't pronounce this shit. Okay. So it's in Thailand, this railway. Now, where is it? Look at look, look at this shit, okay? Do you, first, if you haven't seen this video, look at this. Do you see a railway right here? This is in, this is a bird's eye view of the railway. Where's the railway? I don't fucking know, okay? This is a, this is a market, okay, right here. This is a market. There's like, you know what a market is? It's like a, uh, it's like a strip mall outside. People have their stands, and they sell shit. You know what a market is, okay? But there's a fucking railway right in the middle here. Right in the middle. All these tents and shit are literally right on the fucking railway. 
Now watch what happens. When a train comes, look at that! They have to move everything out of the fucking way. Are you fucking kidding me? And look how tight that is. That is literally the width of the train. And they just set it all back up. Watch it one more time. And watch how fucking close the train gets to killing these people. They literally move out of the way at the last fucking second. And they start coming back and then the train comes back. Is this, like... Couldn't they have found a better spot to put the market? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, why does it have to be right on the goddamn train rail? On the railway? What? Let's read some comments of this. Oh, look, here's another view. I didn't even notice this. Train. Zoom out. Okay, the train's not going that fast, I guess. That must be why. The train barely moves. That's that's a little better the fact that the train really fast. You can tell how fast it's actually going. I'm zooming in. Someone says disgusting. What's disgusting about it? Population thrives at high density with peace. No gun, no theft. No violence. Feeling humble every time I see this. I just... You know, doesn't it seem like the most inefficient spot to put a market? <laughs> like, why couldn't they just... Fucking put it on the other side of those built. Like, there's got to be more places to put a market than on a railway. And I want to know why it's there. I should have looked that up. Let's look it up. Mac. It's closed. It opens at 8 a.m. Uh, famous market we know at least first glance I want to know why though I don't want to care I don't care what is there I, I should have looked this up beforehand. I can't just sit here in silence. Maybe I'll maybe I'll maybe I'll talk about it in the next episode. Why they fucking decided to put it there? I just thought it was interesting. Um, which it is. Fuck. I mean, I wonder how many times the train passes through there. Cause if it's only like once every, you know. Uh, I don't know, man. Just seems eh, completely inefficient. Unless, I don't know. There's got to be a better way. To, there is definitely a better way to do that. Right? It's been. Um, I also started watching or listening to a new podcast. As you know or may not know, you probably don't because no one watches this. Uh, I'm a fan, huge fan of The Office, as is mm, a lot of people. And those people who are fans of The Office generally can be annoying little pieces of poop. <laughs> I'm not the kind of annoying pieces of poop who constantly talks about it. Um, but what the fuck was I going to say? All right. I mean, I'm the kind of person who barely has seen anything. 
I've you name a popular movie, I've probably not seen it. And I really mean that. Like name one, Star Wars. Haven't seen a single one. Haven't seen, haven't even licked the cover. I don't even know. I know nothing about Star Wars other than the fact that there's someone named R2-D2, C-3PO, Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader. You know, I know the character names. I know some of the people who play it. I don't know the plot. I don't know any of the other side characters. I don't know. Like, I don't even understand what a Death Star is. Like, I know nothing about Star Wars. I know nothing about Indiana Jones. I know nothing about The Godfather. You name a movie, I haven't seen it. That's that's my specialty. And the crazy thing was, is I went to film school for writing and television in Vancouver at Vancouver Film School. I dropped I dropped out like a little puss cuz like I said I can't commit to anything that I do cuz I'm a piece of shit. Anyway, so back to the office. <laughs> I was or I started listening to the Office Ladies podcast, which is Jenna Fisher and Angela Kinsley or Kin- Kinsley. Kins- what's her name? Kinsley. Whatever. Uh, you know, Angela Martin and, uh, Pam Beasley from The Office. They have their own podcast. And it's actually pretty interesting because they're, they're, the podcast is based on episodes of The Office. They run through each episode. They're going to do all 200 episodes. So each episode of the podcast is a rundown of an episode of The Office. Okay. They answer questions. They analyze the episodes and talk about specific details that people would not have known unless you talked to someone who was there. And so if you're a fan of The Office, I'd recommend this podcast. But the only thing is they're Jenna and Angela. As much as I love the podcast, I don't enjoy how how sometimes it's cringy because it's it's too like corporatized you know what i mean like it's way too it's way too it feels like sometimes fake in a way where they're they're not being genuine with their emotions and the way that they speak they're kind of doing the the i know there's a word to describe this but i can't think of it but they're doing like the um you know, the basic, clean-cut, uh, fucking straight-edge sword. Uh, making sure they don't say anything that could be taken wrong or whatever. You know what I'm saying? They're just not genuine sometimes. And sometimes they're a little bit annoying <laughs> in the sense that they'll laugh about a joke that's not funny at all and they'll run with it too long but other than that it's interesting to listen to the facts and and uh the what the where about the <laughs> it's just cool to to hear about the real behind the scenes of the podcast or of the of the office very interesting worth checking out shit's loose squeaky I've got a big old beer going on because there's a lack of work, okay? My job requires me to be clean shaven except for a mustache, and that's generally what I have, but I can grow my beard now, which is what I want, okay? If I have an opportunity to grow my beard, I'm going to grow it out. ba ba boom ba boom ba 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 boom ba 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 boom I often wonder how other people do podcasts, you know? Like, anyone. When people just sit down to talk about stuff. Because a lot of times in podcasts... Oh, I forgot to do this. Here's today's cards. Trish Manager. You know the thing. Um, <laughs> a lot of people will... Uh, you know, you won't see how they do the podcast. Uh, you don't know what notes they took down. You don't know if they prepared topics. And people like Chris D'Elia... You watch his, and you know he. I think he even said in his podcast that he doesn't prepare much. He kind of just sits down and runs with it. I 
think. He must have. But, like, you know, after doing so many, you must have s- stuff prepared to talk about. Unless you're just really good at talking. I don't know. Because for me, I have to have stuff prepared. Or else I'm just going to r- ramble and kind of stumble and not talk about anything, really. Uh, so, yeah, like, what exactly do they do? I don't know. Sometimes you see it. Sometimes you'll see, like, in the YMH podcast, um, I notice Christina has, like, a notepad, and she'll write stuff down, and she'll look at it every once in a while. And Tom has a computer in front of him, but you don't know what's going on. I would love to just... I want to be on a professional podcast so I can see what they're doing. Because I know people like Joe Rogan. You know, I've listened to so many Joe Rogan podcasts, and he's he's talked about his process a little bit. And I, I'm pretty sure he doesn't do much of anything. You know, he does he does his little bit of research, but he's mostly just asking questions that would interest him which in turn are interesting to everyone else because he's an interesting character. And he's done so many of them. He's done over, well over a 1,000. I think he's close to 1,500 now or maybe even past that. So the guy, the guy knows stuff. How long have we been running through this? 38 minutes, boys and gentlemen. <laughs> boys and gentlemen. Boys and girls, um, I think I have, yeah, I've got two two more. I've got two more quick little video clips to show here. Should I full screen this? Cause it's kind of, whatever. Okay. Um, so both of these video clips are kind of related in a specific way. Um, I j- these are just something I found. One of them is a demonstration of using a katana properly and using it improperly and how if you use it improperly how it's almost useless and but when used properly it can produce cool results and the other video i have is an example of reflexes and it's not even that cool and i shouldn't even show it but whatever let's just watch this katana video so with this katana video the first like five people that go up to chop the bamboo with a katana have no idea how to use a katana they're dressed like they would know but they don't know so the last guy who looks the coolest uh, and who looks like he knows what he's doing even before he swings the sword he's the guy who chops the bamboo clean anyway let's watch no sound so she she did all right but you see they're they're kind of funking it up. They're getting caught. Kachanga. They're snipping the, the corners off. Papu okay, there's more than five people who do this. Bamboozled. You're getting oh, you didn't even chop it. Oh, you you just chop one. Okay, here's the mofo. Here's the guy. He first bows to the bamboo. Gets his stance, gets his katana out. Here we go. Are you ready? What bam? Look at that, dude. Beautiful. I saw this and I was like, "This is, this is, this is cool. This is fantastic." Too bad the video is low quality, but I mean, what do you do, bro? What do you do when you smell like poo? You do nothing. So here's the. hand-eye coordination I did this this test that this girl is doing right now I did this at a science fair when I was a child in school and I remember thinking because they were talking about video games and how if you're good at video games it can help with your hand-eye coordination and so I was like oh I'm great at video games because every child thought they were great at video games or at least thinks they are most are but when I tried this, I 
It was hard. It was way too hard. And we didn't have this many sticks. We had... I think it was actually just one stick. <laughs> and it was a guy holding it and dropping it. Like, you'd hold it and you'd have your hand here and you'd pop! And you'd have to try to catch it. And I couldn't even do that. But this girl can do a bunch. Watch how cool this is. Ding, donk, dink, donk, dink, donk, dink, donk, dink, donk. What? Let's watch it again. Look at that, man. I want to try this so bad. Because I know I have good peripherals. I can see, like, <laughs> whatever I can see on this, but I, I don't know I'm not saying I'm good at this I just want to try it I feel like I feel like I I don't know I feel like I could do it but then as soon as I'd get there I, I'd fail I'd fail miserably anyway um yeah I guess that's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was a bunch of balogna, but anyway. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you in the next. Uh, uh, don't say that yet. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe. Okay, I need you to do all this. I need you to like it right now. Just go ahead, like it. Like it. Just, just fucking click like. If you're on... A PlayStation or, or a smart TV. All you gotta do is just click the down arrow and then and then go over to the to the op the the the, the options button or whatever the fuck. And then the like button's right there to the right. Just snag over and click like. Okay, you did that. Okay, I need to just subscribe. I need you to hit subscribe now. It's red. It's a red button. Click it. Boom boom. Done. Did that. Okay. What else? Uh, comment. You can leave a comment. Call me a piece of shit. Say I'm stupid. Leave a comment and say, this podcast sucks dick. Okay? And then, hit that bell. I need you to, I need you to actually grab the bell and throw... I don't... <laughs> See, you gotta be careful on YouTube now. I was gonna say throat, F, the F word, throat, bop, you know. But, um... You know, obviously it's a joke, but YouTube doesn't like those jokes. You can get in trouble for them now, so don't don't do anything sexually explicit to the to the bell unless you want to. But click the bell so you know when this shitty podcast gets uploaded again. This is the mushroom. Thanks for coming to the mushroom. I hope to see you in the next one. And goodbye, everyone. Bye. Here, okay, and expecting to just uh, uh, comply with the demands that I put in place, I'm gonna get frustrated, and I'm not gonna be able to do it. And the whole idea of this. Miyamo, miyamo, mi miyamo. I am a miyamo. Yamo ayo esko reskinde shkinde away 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 away. Uh, click click buttons. I like it when you click buttons. That's fun for me. Can you click some more buttons?